going on there, everybody? We are out in the barn because today we're going to be making ourselves a steam box so we could do some steam bending. So we need to build a box. It's nothing really too groundbreaking here, but we do need to start by breaking down material over on the table saw. And I'm using a, well, today it's a very expensive piece of plywood still, but a relatively inexpensive piece of subfloor plywood. Like I said, breaking down on the table saw and then moving over to the miter saw to break down all of the end portions. And the goal is, like I said, a box that looks something like this, but obviously quite a bit longer. What we're looking at right there is actually a add-on section so that we can do a 10-foot steam bend setup. I am using Tight Bond 3 to glue everything up because it is waterproof. Now, is it steamproof? Not really sure. I guess we will find out. But again, using Tight Bond 3, using some 18 gauge brad nails to hold everything in place while I add plenty of screws to make sure this thing does not go anywhere. There's obviously a top and bottom to this that need to be tacked and screwed into place. For one of the ends, I'm going to be using some weather stripping to make sure we get a good seal and screwing, not gluing into place one of those shorter pieces that we cut earlier. On the other side, we will have a door with a hinge so that we can get in there to add the parts that we want to steam. So I'm building this steam box to bend some armrests in the back for a glider rocket chair. But I'm kind of doing that glider rocket chair as a practice to understand the steam bending technique so that I can rebuild a boat that I bought, a wooden boat that I bought. There's a video linked in the description below about that boat. Um, and I need to bend some really long ribs. So I want to make this simple. So you can just saw me put on this back with some weather stripping in here so I can unscrew this. And the weather stripping is on the main box. And the point of that is that I need to be able to put this extension on so that I have a 10 foot and change steam box. So to connect this together, I've got these two pieces here. I'm going to screw them on this side and when it comes time to connect this I'll just screw it together because in the long run I'm not going to need a box that's this long so that we can just stick with this one or maybe something even smaller if I enjoy doing this technique in the future. It is the next day although you probably can't tell because I'm wearing the same hoodie um, but I got to thinking about this steam box overnight. Two things. Number one, I realized I need to get something in here so that I can have like a wire across there or something so that the pieces that I'm steaming are not sitting right on the bottom. Uh, this is eight foot long and it's uh, all closed in. I don't know how I'm gonna get pieces in there. And also, I don't need it this big. Um, I was concerned about the, the volume of steam that can be output by the steam generator. I don't think this is gonna work. And realistically, by the time I get, you know, a couple of pieces in here, get them into the boat or whatever I'm working on, I can put other pieces in and they'll be ready to go. So. To uh, solve these problems, I'm gonna cut this bad boy in half. That'll allow us to put the wire in, or what I think I'm gonna do is just put a couple of pieces of wood on the bottom to just elevate the pieces a little bit to allow steam to get all the way around. So I'm gonna cut this in half. We're just gonna make the whole thing a little bit shorter and that should work beautiful for us. So uh, I guess we'll break this apart, put it back together again. That is woodworking for you. Even on video, it might look great because we can do the magic of editing, but realistically, this is real life right here. Let's get to cut and put it back together again. I have found over the years that woodworking is really about covering up all your mistakes. Not that this was a mistake, this was literally just a change of plan after sleeping on how big that box actually was. I didn't think the little steam generator was going to hold up there, and why did I need something so big? So. We're just breaking it down on the table saw and guess what? We're gonna glue and screw it back together again. No big deal. Couple of minutes and we are back to the spot that we were in the build and can move right along. Uh, nothing special here. Same process as before. And then once we got that done, we're finally into, we're finally caught up to where we were before. And that is uh, we want to put some weather stripping down and a hinge, which I'm just using all material I had besides that piece of plywood in the shop. So this was a, a hinge that came off an old cabinet a little bit of grinder action, we are good to go. Now the way I'm going to hold this shut is with a couple of bolts and some paracord and a, uh, a cleat like you use on a dock when you're docking a boat to tie up lines. I'm gonna put a cleat on there to hold the door shut. Nice and easy and uh, no latching mechanisms in this case. Very awkward position here. Go. 
we got the hinge for our door. Got some weather stripping in there. And to hold it shut, I just got some paracord right here on these two bolts. And the idea is we'll just wrap it like that. We can hold it tight and then come up here and do, I don't know what this is called, but this is what we use to tie down boats. Um, so there we go. That'll definitely hold everything in place. Ready to give her a test. Time for a little experimentation. We are going to be bending some ash. And originally I took a look at this board thinking that this is one that I wanted to use and I would cut things out this way, but I didn't really want the grain going all the way across these boards. And this is another example of one that wouldn't be good because the grain is very straight up and down. So everything that we've got over there is really cut out of a board that has as much flat grain as possible in there. And the idea was that when I cut things out, which I don't remember which orientation I cut them out, I wanna make sure I get the longest grain possible against the board and where the bend is going to be. This is gonna be the first couple pieces right here that I do try to bend. And what I was really going for was to make sure that we had no straight grain all the way across this way. So nothing going across this way because I, I, I think that that will be more likely to snap as we bend these boards around the, uh, the mold that we have right here. As much vertical grain here as I could get, we'll see. I am going to drill one 5 16th inch hole at the what, what is the bottom and we'll also angle this whole thing down a little bit at any condensation will be able to drip out and not puddle up inside. Time for that bit to go. And the steamer we're going to be using is from Erlex, which I think is made by Wagner as well. Uh, just a little steam generator, 1500 watts. Kind of like a space heater. I got it plugged in here because it's warmer in the shop. For a minute, no, no steam coming out of it yet. Alrighty, moved out into the unconditioned side of the barn. Um, the shop is right there, but I don't want all that steam, all that moisture in the shop around the tool. Incline that I mentioned earlier on my Rockler cart right there. And um, I don't know if you can tell, you probably can't, but uh, yeah, little bits of steam. So I'm gonna get this connected. I got it connected right here already. I'm going to get it connected to the Erlax over here and we'll get some steam running into the box. See the steam coming out the box? Beautiful. Oh yeah, heating up in there. So, um, heck, I guess we'll just get some pieces in and let her rip. just gonna put three in right now because that's all I can do on the frame the mold that I got this is currently five after eight I do think it's something like 30 minutes per half inch which those are a quarter but we'll probably check them in 20 and see how flexible we are all right it is cold out there so I left it on for just over 30 minutes. Let's give it a try. I'll be right back. First, notice it doesn't feel very soft. Well, it's bending. Now look at that. Well, ain't that cool. I very quickly found that F clamps are really not ideal for this type of situation and I talk about why in just a minute but you can only move a few inches at a time with an F clamp and you need, and you need to reset so I'll touch more on that in a couple of seconds here. Now here we go first attempt. The wood, the wood seemed rather dry um, but it, it bent in there, bent in there pretty well. Definitely when I was getting getting into this area, it uh, seemed to be cooling down already. So we got all three pieces on. I did snap the outside of the last one 
just a wee bit. I might be able to hide that in a round over. Um, the last one started up here and tried to get this bend first, which wasn't going very well. So these uh, Bessie clamps are uh, getting, getting a little bit stuck. Had to change a different one. I probably need to oil them up a little bit. I wanted to use these because you can just crawl them from 18 inches down to whatever you need. Whereas like these gear clamps and these F-style clamps, you only got the travel here. So I wanted to be able to pull it in. Uh, it didn't exactly work like I was thinking. Um, but in the long run, I think it worked out all right. As you can see, I cut a couple of places into the jig itself so that I could get more clamping pressure right in here instead of piling up all the handles over there. So that seemed to work out all right. I don't know if you can see, but little condensation on the floor. The box is warm down to here. I did put a blanket on to try to hold in some of the heat because it is 38 degrees out here in the barn. But, as you can see, lots of steam being generated right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and unplug everything because our initial experimentation with steam bending is done. We, I think 95% successful with bending our first arm of the glider that I'm experimenting with. We really need to get good because we need to bend ribs for this boat. One thing that I do believe is going to have to happen is another steam generator. I don't think this one is going to generate enough steam because I have that add-on section to be able to make this over a 10-foot box. And I just don't think it's going to be quite enough. Um, we'll see how the white oak fares. Um, that's what the boat is going to be. And what we are doing here on the glider is ash. But overall, I think successful. I hope you guys enjoyed that video learned a little bit about what you might need to do to do some steam bending. It was definitely a fun experiment for me. We got a couple more pieces to do for the glider. I got to do another arm just like this and we got to do a big back, which is going to be tricky right there. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Helps us out. Gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler and you guys have a good one.